Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India come back uh, let us uh, what we have done the initial part of the discussion that like the introductions which uh, uh, to give you an idea about this uh, aircraft or the propulsion and the different aircrafts uh, their status and state of the art situation and that was followed by some of the basic discussion on fluid mechanics and just just to review the thing that is not a detailed uh, lecture on fluid mechanics or thermodynamics. So, that uh, just to let you know that these are the things which are going to be repeatedly used. So, you can refresh your memory or go back and look at the basic thermodynamics and fluid mechanics books to refresh those uh, information. And then finally, we did some discussion on compressible flow, where we started with um, uh, one dimensional compressible flow and then uh, move to normal shock relations where we derive normal shock relations and obviously when you have normal shock relations one can always also use the normal shock from the table but uh, these are and then finally we did discussion on compressible flows and the pressure and temperature variation in the atmosphere and with that um, kind of background we are all set to move for the actually the detailed discussion on our air breathing engine. So, what we are going to look at now, we are going to look at uh, the aero thermodynamics of the air breathing engine and uh, where we start with some of the performance parameters and once we look at the performance parameters and then go in detailed discussion of each of the individual uh, different kind of engines that uh, we have planned for. So, let us uh, start with the um, thing that uh, what we want to do. So, as I said we are going to talk about the aero thermodynamic of uh, aircraft engines or aircraft jet engines rather. Okay. Now, here when it passes through this uh, big airlines which are quite high, so the mass flow rate uh, it deals with this aircraft engines or the jet engines is large mass flow rate that is very very important. Now, air flow rate is also high for a air flow rate is high for a piston propeller engine. So, piston propeller. Now, a turbine is more efficient in handling large flows than a propeller. Okay. So, there is a complex uh, in piston propeller there is a complex gear assembly in piston propeller engine. Now, when you have that kind of propeller at high speed, uh, there are tip shocks or tip uh, shock waves generated, there would be noise. Now, turbojet and turbofan can operate quite reasonably at high subsonic speeds. Turbojet can be supersonic, 
piston propellers are more efficient for low speed and uh, small aircraft. Jet engines also can do VTOL and thrust vectoring, this already we have seen some of the example while doing the introduction. Turbine is a very efficient machine to convert flow energy to other form of energy that is electricity and all this. Um, so, the when the gas flow through the turbine, it turns the turbine and the rotating motion of the turbine can be used to generate the power and the gases expands across the turbine. Now, to have gas flow across the turbine, there must be a pressure drop. So, across turbine, there must be pressure drop, delta P is there. Okay. So, hence a pressure ratio across the engine must be provided. Therefore, the first necessary step in a gas turbine cycle is the compression of the working fluid. So, just to get that, so one can see compression is the first step and that is what happens when you look at the uh, total sequence of process, it comes to intake and then to compressor then compressor to combustion chamber, then uh, turbine, then nozzle and then finally goes out. So, this compressor is very very important and to get this compression, compressor is used and mostly in the gas turbine, these are um, axle flow compressor and also used in multiple stages because uh, when you use the multiple stage compressor, we can get desired pressure rise or high pressure rise. Now, if the compressed gases are expanded directly in the turbine and there are no losses in any of them, the power, power developed by the turbine would be the power absorbed by the compressor. So, in ideal situation, you need one compressor and one ideal turbine that means no loss are coupled together and then the combination can just turn itself so and you will get useful but no useful work now when the turbine develops the power or the power developed by turbine can be increased by adding energy to the working fluid so and that is done the energy is added to the fluid in combustion chamber. So, this is where the fuel burns. So, you can see first the large amount of air which is kind of drawn into the system and then there is a compressor which does the compression process, then when it goes to the, so this uh, increases the pressure and also slows down the flow field or the velocity, then it goes to combustion chamber where due to the burning of the fuel, the extra energy is added and this added energy when it passes through the turbine where the expansion takes place, the turbine produces power and it passes through the nozzle. So, due to this high due to this uh, added energy or the hot gases which are uh, expanded in turbine, it produces the power and that is provide the useful output. Now, if we look at a schematic of the basic gas generator. So, that is uh, very basic of an gas generator which uh, you can see you have an air coming in then this is a unit of compressor, then this uh, after compression this uh, air goes to the combustion chamber where the fuel burns and extra um, energy which is added and then finally, it comes to turbine and then the product pass through to get the output and the turbine and compressor sitting on the same mechanical component like a shaft. So, this can produce electricity, it can lift weight 
and if the hot gases expanded through a nozzle at high velocity can produce thrust. So, that is what it happens. Now, when you look at this basic gas generator, so you have air comes in, pass through the compressor, then the combustion takes place, hot gas goes to this turbine, then the this turbine is connected with the shaft to the compressor and this is and if you look at the cut section here, this will give you an very nice uh, picture of the engine. So, this component from the compressor combustor turbine this is what we call it the basic gas generator. Here it pass through and you can see in compressor very interestingly why we use this kind of uh, typical symbol for compressor because the area actually decreases uh, and these are axial stage compressor and turbine um, this actually increases. So, area increases. Okay. So, one can say the heart of a gas turbine engine is the gas generator, okay, which has compressor, combustor and turbine, which are major components and very common to turbojet, turboprop, turbosept. So, the purpose of gas generator is to supply high temperature and high pressure gas. So, so that is the basic gas generator which uh, for which this is it. Now, when we have a basic gas generator and you can see how this uh, development or the proceeding added component can make things complicated and the increase the uh, or enhances the capability. Now, with this basic gas generator, so we add so by let us say adding an inlet and a nozzle to a gas generator. So, what it gets you get a turbojet engine. So, again if you look at this is the basic component of the gas generator compressor turbine and then now we have added an exhaust and inlet. So, this is the portion which is there. Now, previously we had and then this is the portion which is added. Now, here immediately this schematic will give you another uh, picture which is also quite informative that you have two different stages of compressor. So, that means they are not also put it in on the now one is the low pressure compressor where area ratio is quite drastic or area change is quite drastic and then the high pressure compressor 
after this the flow pass through the combustor then obviously when these are there you have high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine and one important thing is that high pressure turbine is connected with high pressure compressor and low pressure turbine is connected with low pressure compressor and you can see from that picture who is sitting on which uh, mechanical component like the shaft because the power produced by HPT partly goes to run the HPC, power produced by LPT partly goes to run LPC. These are very very important and um, uh, very fundamental information for any gas turbine engine or the jet engine. Now here the uh, high speed exhaust gases leaving the engine causes a net change in the momentum which is manifested by a force generated by the engine and this force is called the this force is called thrust ok. So, we have seen lot of uh, turbojet example uh, one of the quick uh, just to G E J 79 is a turbojet engine with after burner or A B. That means, after turbine before pass through the nozzle there would be secondary uh, fuel inlet where the burning takes place. So, from the basic gas generator when you add this inlet section and the nozzle section we get the turbojet engine. Now, with this turbojet engine if we add some fan now and some component now except this fan if you look at the rest of the portion was there in the this turbojet engine. Now, when we add that component of the fan this makes an turbo fan engine. So, apart from the compressor you have added fan sitting there. So, there are some advantages using this kind of system, but let us uh, look at this schematic here. So, you see the fan is sitting there, you have already the inlet, then from fan after fan the air gets splitted in two component one goes through this bypass this is called the bypass nozzle or the bypass section one pass through this uh, core of the engine. So, the one which pass through the core of the engine that pass through the rest of the component of the gas generator which is compressor I mean low pressure high pressure combustor HPT low LPT and the nozzle and the rest. So, this bypass nozzle also so, the total thrust here, the total thrust has two components, one is the thrust due to cold or the bypass and the thrust due to hot. So, you have two components which also that means, this bypass contributes to the thrust generation or the production. And what it allows that much compared to turbojet much more air can be moved, efficiency is higher see than turbo jets and it can go from subsonic to supersonic application. So, 
there are that means the flow component will have that pass through the fan then splitting some of these example we have seen in a detailed um, introduction there are different kind of uh, turbofan engines are application today not only in the civilian applications they are both in military application also and that's the increase of turbofan engineering is more and more because of this for example like one can say pratt and whitney uh, jt 9d pw 4000 f100 with ab this is used in f15 eagle then g cf6 g90 f110 with ab which is also used in f16 falcon then you have rolls royce which is rb 211 524 GH, you have SNECMA, CFM 56. So, these are some of the examples, but the exhaustive list uh, is already kind of discussed during uh, introduction. Now, so that is how things gets more and more once you add one after another component things get more complicated. Now, another is the turbo prop where we added an uh, propeller there and uh, ahead of the compressor. So, just to have this propeller or to run this propeller one has to have the gear box which is uh, necessary. Why? To maintain optimum speed for both propeller and core of the engine. Okay. So, you have a gearbox sitting here. Now, the schematic if you see there is a gearbox sitting there and this is the section which is propeller and this is the basic gas generator portion which has compressor, I mean uh, LPC, HPC, combustor, HPT, low PT and then pass through the nozzle and all this. But um, this um, is uh, this uh, propeller kind of configuration, obviously uh, there are certain advantages and certain disadvantages. One of the big advantage with this uh, configuration is that it can handle uh, huge mass of air at low speed that is one of the advantage. So, at the low speed application this is more efficient compared to turbo fan, but as I said this is limited to low speed application, because when you go to high speed there would be possibility of possibility of propeller tip shock waves at high speed. So, that restricts the application at high speed and also another advantage for the propeller engine because of this gear box and the huge propeller the engine become uh, bit bulky and heavier. So, but obviously nothing is kind of um, perfect. So, whenever we use something it will come with some added advantage and come with some added disadvantage. So, these are the um, basic um, gas generator with some component like turbojet, turboprop or turbofan engines. Now, we can look at the 
calculation of thrust. Now, let us uh, take a system like this where the inlet area is A i and uh, this is the structural support just to keep this and uh, this is a free body diagram and this control volume that we have taken this is the inlet mass flow rate and uh, we have inlet exit station 1 2 and then uh, upstream velocity temperature. So, and this is the reaction force. So, we can say that uh, let us say steady flight in x direction okay. and T is the reaction to the thrust transmitted through the structural support okay and what would be engine thrust engine thrust is the summation of all forces on the internal and external surfaces of the engine and nacelle. Okay. Now, what we can write? Let us say the momentum conservation equation, equation for steady flow. So, this is our control volume plus control surface rho u, u dot n d a summation of f. So, this goes to 0 because uh, steady assumption. Now, what we can do the considering the components of force and momentum in the x direction only. So, consider the components of force and momentum in the x direction only then what we could write uh, control surface rho u x u dot den is summation of f x okay. and summation of f x would be T plus A e P A minus P e uh, which is net pressure force on control surface. Okay. So, let uh, say m dot a is rho u a i which is your drawn into the engine per unit time, then m dot e is rho e u e a e which is the mass flow rate or mass flow rate crossing the exhaust areas that is A e 
for unit time m dot f is the fuel mass flow rate which is mass of fuel consumed per unit time and what we can write is that m dot e. So, now we can write the um, continuity equation or uh, so or rather the total mass conservation. So, m dot exit if you look at the diagram this is where the mass drawn into the system fuel is added and this is where m dot e should be m dot a plus m dot f which one can write that m dot f is rho e u e a e minus rho u a i. So, this is an very very important information that you get the total mass balance. So, the mass which comes in that is the air comes in. So, typically the subscript that we use this will follow whether it is air or fuel or exhaust. So, that it makes it bit uh, easy or consistent to understand the things. So, this is what you get in the mass balance we will stop it here and um, find out the thrust and all this expression in the next discussion.